Hello, Shepherd of the Hills. We are, I am here with Pastor Qualley at the church. And though we are not together physically, we are here in spirit. And we thought we'd share a few thoughts with you and some scripture and some prayer uh, on this day. I'm surprised that we have these empty chairs, but Pastor Darson and I can look around the sanctuary and, and see you sitting in these chairs. We know where you sit when you gather here in worship. So I know there are times that you like to fool us and move around, but not very often uh, because people are special here at Shepherd of the Hills. And in fact, when I look through the directory, I don't just see names. I see faces and I see people and I see the ups and downs and the joys and hurts, the blessings of each of you. So though this sanctuary might seem empty, it really isn't. And thank you for being the family at Shepherd of the Hills. And we know this is a very unusual time in our in our community's life, our, the world's li the life of the world, and we know that some of these days may feel a little dark. And so we've lit these candles behind us on the altar. And just to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world, who gives us hope and, uh, and assurance and comfort in all of our days and in trust in the, the life to come as well. When we look for resources to get us through these difficult times, we all have special places we turn to. If you come with me to my library at home, I have a book that's rather well-worn. It's called Psalms Now by Leslie Brandt. He takes the Psalms and puts them in kind of contemporary language. I want to just read part of this. This is Psalm 46. As we look at the situation we live in here in not only America, but around the world, Psalm 46, our God is a great God, our refuge and strength. He is ever aware of our problems and fears. Thus we have no business doubting him, even though the faith is convulsed with tragedy. Just look around you. Read the pages of history. Refresh your flagging spirits with the reminder of his great feats throughout all the ages. And you will hear again him speaking, Relax, stop fretting, and remember that I'm still your God, and I will hold the reins of the world for you. So writes Leslie Brandt, no writes God to all of us. Another story from scripture, we just wanted to lift up this day, is the story of a Samaritan woman who encounters Jesus at the well. Most of the time, Women would gather at the well in groups early in the day when the sun was not quite so hot or perhaps later in the evening. But we find this woman, this Samaritan woman, going to the well about noontime. She's alone. And she encounters Jesus who, who comes to her. Now she's a Samaritan and, and Jews and Samaritans did not connect, did not relate well to one another. But Jesus come, is there and offers her asks her for a cup of water, something to drink. What's interesting is that many of the Jews would not go through Samaria when they'd come from Jerusalem and going to Galilee. They'd try to avoid it. But Jesus purposely came through Samaria. And coming through there, he came to that woman at the well and said, I want to have water. Can you give me a drink? And she said, you don't have uh, equipment uh, big enough to reach down there and so forth. But he said, I can give you water that you'll maybe never thirst again from. And she says, can you give me this water? And that becomes a wonderful dialogue that he has with this encounter, a friendship, a relationship that he establishes with her. And he even offers her living water. And the woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. It's a beautiful story, and I think it's one that we can connect to in so many different ways. One of the things that I like about this story is if you pick it up and look at it in your Bible, you'll find, I think it's about verse five or six, a parentheses that said uh, the disciples went into town to get food, to buy food, because they were hungry. So Jesus sent them into town to get food. As they were going into town, they met this woman coming out. 
they passed by her. There weren't many paths or roads that they could travel on. So here's these many disciples going into town to buy food, saw this woman, it just completely missed her. Now she's a woman in great need. She was embarrassed, that's why she came at noon. She had a lot of problems on her mind. She was a person that needed help. The disciples didn't see that. But here's the story how Jesus stopped and knew her and cared for her. He saw her. He saw her, truly saw her. And she, after she had this encounter with Jesus, went and, and went to, to others and, and told them all about her experience encountering Jesus. And she was filled with joy. And, and I think what strikes me most in this story is this woman initially, when she went to the well, she was all alone, embarrassed or uh, just maybe she wasn't allowed to be with the women or they just didn't want her there with them. But she encountered Jesus. And so when she, originally she had come in solitude, later she came with people. And how Christ brings us into a, a special community with others. And how we as a community of faith here too are, are gathered together as the church. And how we can be there for one another and to love and support each other. And I think at this time, that is such an important message to hear that Jesus is the one who brings us together as people of God, as his children, and that we can be there to support and love and to embrace each other no matter what, no matter what we have experienced in life or are going through right now. And even today, I, I want to just challenge each of us as we are in this kind of this, this very odd time of our, our world's life to think about the others around us, some who may be alone, some who may feel alone. And I wanna challenge each of us to, to think of at least two people in our lives that we know, that maybe we haven't talked to in a while or maybe are part of this congregation and that we can either call on the phone and just say hello or text and say, hey, I'm thinking about you or somehow connect and whatever it looks like that is best for in your in your home and in for you but i want to challenge us to be the church even when we can't see each other face to face to still love and support as we are called to love god through loving others so with that text we don't want to be like those disciples that walked down that road missed a very hurting person could have made a big difference in her life so we as a church have an opportunity in this time to bring a blessing out of something that's kind of weighing heavy on our minds of how can we be the church in a new way and receive a double blessing that when you help somebody, you're gonna be sharing a, a joy within. That's what it is to be caring for people. So may, uh, may we hear good stories and may lives be touched through this kind of time together. As we begin now just a moment of prayer and uh, asking God to come and give us the strength for this journey, let us pray. Almighty God, we are thankful that we can turn to you, that you still hold the reins on this world. We can only imagine what it is to be a person who's ill with the virus, the concerns they have, not only in America, but around the world. We're thankful that we have places here, doctors, nurses, facilities that we can go to, give them strength and wisdom as they deal with it, and be with those in leadership in this nation around the world that they can find a way to, to alleviate as much as they can of people getting ill and, and find ways that they can find vaccines or ways of curing this so that this can be eradicated too, that in history we'll look back and say, we got through this with the help of so many people. So be with those who are ill and those who are anxious about getting ill, that you put our fears at rest and help us to do the good things, the wise things, but to know that that you're in control and we'll do our part and we'll get strength whatever faces. So we, we put this in your hands as we thank you that you do hold the reins of the world. And we pray this in, in your name, amen. And gracious God, we pray for those for whom this is particularly hard, economically or emotionally, for those who are feeling anxious as Pastor Qualley prayed, but also for those who feel alone, 
And for those who are in homes where relationships just need some mending, Lord God, we pray that you would bring that healing as well, that this time that you would bring good out of, out of the time that we have been given. And um, we just pray, Lord God, for all things that we know that, that you are with us and your comfort and your peace you give to us. And we are grateful for that. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now here is, as we blend our voices together in that perfect prayer that we're lifting up at this season of Lent, but actually all year long and our whole lives as we pray these words together. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And, and lead us, us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from, from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the, and the glory, forever, forever and ever. ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God.